In this video, I hand selected three examples to solve for the missing angle when giving you a angle bisector. An angle bisector, a lot of times, is going to take an angle and cut it in half. But what about when you have the angles represented by algebraic expressions? Well, through these three different examples, I'm going to help you understand how to solve for that missing angle. I hope you enjoy. Welcome. All right, so what we have is we have an angle in the black, and then what we've done is we've created an angle bisector. Uh, you can see that ray is JL. And remember, an angle bisector cuts an angle in half. It creates two congruent angles. So here I have the large angle, and then this angle bisector now cuts this into two equal angles. Therefore, since those two angles are now equal based on the definition of an angle bisector, I can now say that 2n plus 7 is equal to 4n minus 13. Now let's go and determine what exactly they're asking. They say find the value of n, not h. I don't know where my n's and h's got a little mixed up. So now all I simply need to do is solve this equation. And to do that, I got to make sure I get the variable on the same side. And you can choose the left side or the right side. I always like to make it, I always like to choose a side where my variable will be positive. So I'll use the subtraction property of equality, subtract 2n on both sides. That goes to 0, subtracts to 0, and then I'm left with 7 equals 2n minus 13. Now I have a two-step equation, so I just need to undo a um, subtraction from my variable. So I'll add 13 on both sides, and I have 20 equals 2n. Now I use a division property of equality by dividing 2. That divides the 1, and I'm left with 10 equals n. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you use the definition of an angle bisector to solve an equation. Thanks. Welcome. Uh, in this problem, again, I'm given the same angle. So I have this large angle. And I'm provided an angle bisector, which we label JL. Now, remember the definition of an angle bisector. An angle bisector is a ray that is going to divide an angle into two congruent angles. So we can say that the measure of KJL is equivalent to the measure of HJL. Right? These two are equal in measure by the angle bisector. Um, so let's go and look at what we have. Well, they're giving us the angle of H, J, K, H to J to K. So they gave us the measure of the large angle, right? The large angle is 7B minus 2, 224. Then they gave us the measure of one of the smaller angles, H, J, L. Now remember, we said that these are equivalent. So if that's 2B, then that has to be 2B. And understanding that this plus this has to equal the measure of the large arc, right? This plus this is equal to the measure of the angle. So I'll, I need to solve for b so I can write 2b plus 2b is equal to 7b minus 24. So now I can combine my like terms on my left side. So I have 4b equals 7b minus 24. Now I'll get the variables to the same side. So I'll subtract a 7b on both sides. And I'm left with a negative 3b equals negative 24. Then to divide out a negative 3, and my final answer is b equals 8. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve using the angle bisector. Thanks. All right, what I like to do is uh, do a little geometry for you. So what we have here is uh, we have a couple rays. And we're going to use these rays to uh, help us solve a couple problems. So a couple things you guys need to know is we have our um, ray uh, JK, or KJ and KL. Those are opposite rays of each other and uh, Kn bisects angle LKM. Now the word bisects is going to be crucial in, action, in helping to solve these problems. Um, if you remember bisects, what that's going to automatically tell us is that's going to cut it in half. So Kn, or yeah, Kn cuts this angle in half. And that's crucial in helping us solve problems because what that does is that tells us that these two angles are not equal to each other. And that's going to be our key ingredient that's going to help us solve these problems. So on the first problem, it says, if measure of angle LKM, so it's L to K to M, so this whole angle is equal to 7x minus 5. So we can write 7x minus 5. And measure of angle NKM, so N to K to M, is equal to 3x plus 8. So if I know that this is 3x plus 8, and I just told you that since this bisects, that this is equal to 3x plus 8, I can write that the whole angle, like from, from LKM, is going to equal do both of these combined or added together. So 3x plus 8 plus 3x plus 8. 
So this whole angle equals this plus this. And since they bi are bisected, they're equal to each other. So now I can do some math. So this becomes 7x minus 5 equals, well, I don't really need these parentheses anymore, do I? I'm just going to now rearrange it so my variables are, and my constants are next to each other. So I have 7x minus 5 is equal to 6x plus 16. I will uh, add a 5. Therefore, I get 7x is equal to 6x uh, plus 21. Subtract 6x. X now equals 21. Um, so therefore, I know now what x equals. And it says, find the measure of LKM. So I know that LKM is 7x minus 5. So I can now write 7x minus 5 is equal to M. Oh, I'm sorry. Is equal to the measure of angle LKM. Well, I know what x equals now, which is 7 minus 5. All right. Well, 7 times uh, 21 is going to be 140, 147. And that equals 142 equals the measure of angle LKM. All right. So that's how you find, uh, um, use your bisecting term to go and help you uh, solve those two problems.